It's a tax show, Jim, but not as we know it. Be a cheeky tit. And this is great banter. Oh, hello. Oh, welcome to Manga Chat. Hello, I'm Simon Hanselman. How are you doing? Well, let's see if anybody else is available to chat. You don't want to hear just me chatting. That'd be like shouting into the void. Who have we got here? Well, well, well. If it is. Here's Nate Garcia. Are you coming in, boys? Are you coming in the chat sphere? Good afternoon. Oh. Good afternoon. Is it the afternoon? It is. Well, good morning. Oh, what are you doing? What's up, Dan? Hi, Josh. Oh, lovely intro today. Oh. What's up, mate? Oh my God, beautiful. That's oh, good to see mm -hmm. everybody. Yeah, yeah. Josh, I'm loving the power wash shirt. That's crazy. That's almost vintage at this point. Yeah, yeah. Dress up as a fan Halloween. of me for Halloween. <laughs> oh yeah. Wash my power. Wow, what, what did everybody have for breakfast? Today? I'm so curious. Well, he's straight into it. I'll start. Oh, I didn't have breakfast. Now, yeah. I didn't have breakfast. Fucking hell, Josh! You knew mango was today. You fucking idiot. For lunch, I went to. Uh, there's this place like on my block called Taco King that I always kind of. Dismissed a little bit, but I've been going there and getting uh be <laughs> <You> fucking racist. <laughs> There's this like I've been getting the burrito with no meat and no cheese, and it's four dollars, and it's so good. It's like, what is it? Just a tortilla? No, it's like beans and uh, beans and rice and uh, onions, cilantro, and then uh, red sauce. Oh yeah, it sounds wet. It sounds good. Four bucks. Oh, oh, no, yeah, yeah. Inflation hasn't hit uh, Taco King yet. Bam. Exciting, Josh. Mm. I'm wet just thinking about that delicious wet burrito. <laughs> so good. Guess what I have for breakfast? Simon, what did you have for breakfast? I'll give you a hint, Nate. I'm Australian and I like spreads. That's right. I had Vegemite on toast. I had some uh, whole oh, okay. wheat bread. With a bit of butter, a bit of uh, uh, what's what's the brand of butter we get? It's a, it's an Irish butter. So uh, with no added salt, so we can add our own salt. And I added a, I added a bunch of salt, and then I had the Vegemite. And I smeared it up, and I had that. Yeah. I'm back on the coffee as well. Didn't have one today, but the last few days I've had like a, a croissant with uh, with a cappuccino. So I'm getting back on the coffee. Ooh. Yeah, no, it was a riotous breakfast this morning. I think a croissant. Yeah, that's nice. Josh, Those are very fat. Fat. What? Very fat. Uh, Simon, Simon froze for you too. Okay. Oh my God! Again, again. That's for me. Go. We're gonna have all these technical difficulties again. Anyway, right. We're all back. We've got a very special guest today. It's gonna be exciting today. We've booked a guest. They're coming in in about ten minutes. So, guest, uh, I, I 
pre-messaged you and said to be lurking around. We'll bring you in at about the 15-minute mark. We run a very professional show. I just got to say, boys, we, we had 26,000 views uh, last week on our last week's uh, sixth or seventh episode, whatever it was. I lose track. Um, that's a lot and of viewers. We're getting, we're getting like the you. click treatment too now. We're getting people like cutting up clips and posting them. And I saw. This is copyrighted material. They shouldn't be doing that. Um, but, you know. Have at it, I suppose. Mitch Blowjob sharing uh, clips. Yeah, Mickey Blow Me. Yeah. <laughs> the Blow Man. Yeah, no. It's exciting. It's pretty weird to me to hear that because honestly, when I was, because I mean, I was there. It, it, it only felt like maybe 21,000, 22,000. 20, <laughs> it didn't really feel like that to me. It felt more like 21. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Didn't, didn't have the stink of 26. I didn't feel like 26,000 sets of eyes ravaging my body. But uh, apparently, apparently, according to the Instagram analytics, I mean, I, I don't know if that's individual views or if, like, the same people are just watching it over and over again. Um, I don't know. But it's, it's yeah, terrifying, yeah. terrifying and exciting. I mean, these are like kayfabe numbers. I mean, you know, I don't know. There's a new kayfabe in town. Maybe we'll get Dan Klaus on next week. Uh, I don't know. Twice, we, we could get him twice. Maybe like he'll, we'll ask him if he wants to come on again, and he'll be like, Absolutely, boys. Yeah, he'd, <laughs> he'd staunchly say yes, he wouldn't pussyfoot around and be like, mm. He'd actually just say, Yeah, sure, I'd love to. Yeah, we'll he would ask us to come on again, I think. Yeah, probably all over his face. Bo, anyway, let's say the new eight ball collection is out on November 1st. Yeah. The, uh, the, that's what he was promoting on Kayfabe, uh, the complete eight ball paperback. I think it's uh, forty nine ninety nine. You've got a quote on the back there by Simon Hanselman. And I, I say it's a brutal cockeyed lampooning of the human condition as searing and sensual now as it was then. Parentheses in the 80s and 90s. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's kept its edge. It's, it's kept its, uh, its sass and, it, and its heart. It's, it's really, you'd, you'd be remiss in your duties as a, as a manga or American comics fan if you didn't pick this up. You'd, you'd have to be a clown, frankly, a fucking clown. So go yeah, down. I'm excited to get that. I, uh, lost my, I lost my uh, hardcover version, so I'm pretty excited to buy that. Yeah, I down at the old public toilet. Nate, you know how I lost it. I'm not going to get it. It's a big book. Did it fall out the window? No, I didn't lose it. Uh, the person who, who I, my ex would not let me take it. It's because it's oh. such a good book. It's, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. If you're having a breakup with someone, they're not going to let you take that book. Even if you purchase it, they're going to say, no, get the fuck out of here. And you're not taking a Klaus book because it's that bloody good. It's essential. Yeah, yeah. Especially with those eBay prices. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. You gotta watch I got to watch those that scalpers. I got that book like two weeks ago because I pre-ordered it. I haven't read it all the way through. I've, I've lent it to somebody. So you're right about that, Josh. I'm never getting it back. They shipped it out early to you. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought if you, yeah. if you... I just pre-ordered it. So I think it just got... I think it's... Fanographics seem to do that now. They'll ship stuff out. Like, you know, if it comes to the warehouse early, they'll just ship them out. I think that's really cool. But, you know, because if you pre-order... You know that you're doing a solid for the company. You're pledging allegiance to, like, you know. So it's it's really it's a nice reward for them to say, "All right, we're going to send it out early. Thank you for your custom." Yeah, there's no impulse by pre-orders. There, uh, it's a commitment. Indeed, I, I should mention that's a good segue while we're getting our plugs out of the way before a special guest comes on. Uh, if you pre-order my new book, Below Ambition, coming out November eighth, you get that from Fanographics, direct from Fanographics.com. You get these free stickers. Uh, You'll get a sticker sheet. And if you buy the book from Amazon or Skylight Books or anywhere else, uh, Floating World, Desert Island, I don't know, it come, does come with a record. All copies do come with a flexi disc record. So it's very exciting. Pick that up. Now tell me about the flexi disc record because I was born in 2002. We, I know about, I know about, I know about like flexi pencils, like the rubber pencils. So a flexi disc, if I want to listen to it, like, Cause it's, it's like a song, so I want to put. Do, do I put it on my phone or do I put it underneath my? <laughs> I don't think there's a reader for the phone. I think they're working on an app reader that can go around the grooves and, and sonically transfer it to your phone. They're working on it. I saw a Kickstarter for it. That technology does not yet exist, so you do have to use a traditional record player for this. This is gonna. This has got little grooves, a little pen, Wait, a what... little Victrola. Your Edison player will will go around and make noises. Does it come with scissors to make it round? Uh, scissors not included. You've got to use your own scissors. 
is the hole like you put it like a charging port, like a through like a wire to my phone or what? It's the size of a standard P hole, and it will fit any Victrola, Edison player, or record area. You can put it on your turntable, your DJ sets, Nate. I know you love doing your, your late night DJ sets down at the clubs. You can spin yeah. this. Everyone will hate you and throw bottles at you, but it will work. Wow. Well, man, I'm gonna have to get a new phone. That sounds great. Yeah, no, check out that Kickstarter for the uh, for the Sonic app. It's gonna play flexi disc on your phone. That's really exciting. Cause I got piles of flexi discs over here. I mean, I can't move in my studio for all the flexi discs I've collected through the years. I've got Ed Piscor flexi discs. I've got Mad Magazine flexi discs. I've got all of them. Have you got a Power Wash flexi disc? No, I don't think John, you've not you manufactured any flexi discs yet, have you? No, no, I'm not in the flexi disc business. You, you lazy oh. bastard! You lazy. It's not that hard. You just get your uh, your major publisher to <laughs> write around and you know just hook it up and do it for you. It's not that hard. I think music's for weirdos. I'm not. I'm not. Not doing music. I don't listen to it. I don't like music. Yeah, I, I, tell. I tried to play some Oasis in the car once with Josh, and he just flipped the fuck out. And he tried to put on a fucking book on tape. He was like, that's, yeah, all, yeah. that's all I'll listen to. That's all I'll acquiesce. So we listened to Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah, I was like, this is the worst Joe Rogan episode I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we kid, we kid. But anyway, uh, yeah. let's, uh, let's bring a special guest on in about four minutes. Uh, anyone got anything to, to say up front? Any important plugs, you guys? You both going on a short run uh, next week or something? Oh, my God, that's oh, next no. week. Fuck. I gotta buy my plane. <laughs> okay, so Nate's not gonna be at short run. Wait, Nate, did you stick with that original flight that you booked, or did you change it? Do you think I've got time in my life to change mistakes that I've made in the past? Yeah. I'm so living you... with a 15 hour layover in Las Vegas on the way back home, and an eight hour layover in Las Vegas on the way there. He booked it, and then I sent him a flight minutes later that was half the price with no layovers. Oh my god! But it's because I was. Just I think we discussed this though, right? Yeah, yeah. This is this is um, we're rehashing is what we call it in the business, but it's unfortunate. But this is the thing: is I got pages to work on, so I'll be you're, bringing them. You're a busy young professional. They've got chairs at but the. Yeah. But short run, um, up in sunny Seattle, Washington. Um, it's going to be a good one. What's the date on that? Anyone know the official date? What weekend is it? The 5th. The 5th, the weekend, the 5th, 5th of November. Saturday, the 5th of November. It's going to be a banger of a show, I'll bet. Some good guests there. Antoine Maillard um, from France. He's come all the way. His uh, new book's called Slash Em All from Fanographics. Lovely book. Does have a cameo from Al in there, the Al character from Megan Mog. He's on a little poster in the book, which tickled me. Um, I love Antoine; he's a lovely guy. Uh, Anna Highfish is going to be there. Um, Anna's also doing events in Los Angeles on the eighth, on Wednesday, the eighth of November, with me at Skylight Books. But yeah, you're going to have a great time at uh, Short Run, guys. I think this is like the. I mean, they did ten years worth of shows, then the pandemic happened, so I think this is like their eleventh show coming back after two years off. But it's going to be a fun. Um... Banger. I'm very excited for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm out of my wits excited. And Josh and Jasper are going to be having a brand new zine that Jasper Jubens are. Boom. Crazy. Yeah, just a little drawing zine. Diva beating up Ted Wood and uh, making out with him. <laughs> making out with it? What? She kisses him. Spoilers. I haven't seen this. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's exclusive to Short Run, so... It'll only be available in a short run. What about from Josh if he comes to your house for a bike ride or to go and play pool? Will, will it be? Will oh, it be I'll, yeah, I'll, br I'll bring one. Yeah, it's exclusive to my house in the dive bar as well. Fuck yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. The perks of I'm being friends friend. with Pettinger. What's everybody working on right now, right before we get Alex Graham up in here? Oh. Painting. What? Nate, you just spoiled. All right. That was uh, that was actually seriously not even on purpose, but I know I'm gonna be working on What's this. That? Wait, that talk today. It's a it's a back cover painting for a zine that Josh and I are working on. Um, yeah, it's just base layers right now. I, I'm just I'm just laying down my base layers. I got I got to fluff all the grass up. I got to shade all the trees up, uh, tiles, windows. 
Uh, concrete needs a lot of work. The leaves need a lot of work. It's, it's, yeah, it's probably another 10 hours or so to go of work here. Uh, I love it. A few digital cunts sitting around like, oh, five minutes, dunk, dunk, dunk. This, this takes me like 30 hours to do one of these. But you know, that's why I'm a better artist than you guys. You know? That's why I make right. more, more money and I'm more successful. Put more time into it, more care, more passion. The reason yeah, yeah. Well, people can tell. Yeah. <laughs> you, you're clowning yourselves. You, you be clown yourselves. That's right. That's right. Well, if I ever, if, if ever in my life I wake up on a on a hot day and I see one of your drawings colored on a computer, I'll have to say I win. Well, I'm actually about to buy a tablet pretty soon. Me and Josh are going to be coloring a project together. So yeah, my wife's really pissed about it. She's actually really no way. Wait, She's wait, like, "What are the you... fuck are you doing? You're not going to buy a tablet, are you? Can't." And I said, "Yeah, I am. I, you know, I, the water coloring takes a long time. So we're doing a project, and I, I can't spend." I'm saving my watercolor for Meg's Coven. I'm starting up Meg's Coven next year. It's going to be a series of floppies. Uh, I'm going to be putting them out as much as I can, as, 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 you know, as quick as I can, and just pumping them out. Um, so I'm saving my watercolor juice for that. So I'm going to dip it in. And I, I want to learn how to use a tablet. You, you boys are doing good work with the tablet. I see a lot of people... I don't use there. a tablet. Well, <laughs> click, 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 click. But Josh says you use the tablet for little highlights. Like there's certain things you want to use the pen. Or like, you know, putting some stars on. If I do like a blue sky, yeah, I'll yeah. some some white stars. If there's an explosion, I want to like draw on some little highlights. I don't know how it works, but I'm going to fucking learn and join the 21st century or whatever, wherever we live and, and figure it out. It's going to be really, it's going to be a heart smart journey. Wow. Yeah. What are you well, guys working I'm, on? Glad there's no contradictions in any, in any previous statement then. Well, I'm just uh, working on, I have one more drawing to do for this drawing zine. I've just got one more left and then I'm done. I'll stick it down. They're, all, are they, they're all on the same page like that? Yeah, so I can sell this. But wow, you sold, that's you foresight. That's you could have cool. sold eight separate drawings, you dickhead. Now you're just like, oh, you're going to get one drawing, or you could have sold eight. Sean and Anathem is going to kick your ass. It's going to be like, John, yeah, you're yeah. a fucking moron. You could have given me eight drawings. You're giving me one. You, you, you dropped. Dropped from the fucking art dealer, you moron. Josh, you really thought you were doing something, but you weren't. That's so you sad. You sh shot down. Me and Nate just like, you fucking buffoon. My God. I've been you, cheating lately. I do have to admit what is oh, that? I don't use a tablet, but if I want to get nice spacing on a on a on like a, see, I used I used this I, I used this to make sure that this was exactly straight and not sloppy at all. Nate, you remember when you used to not measure out your letters, so it would always be like the word, and then the last two letters always squeezed in at the end. Yeah, that's the old me, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Well. Should, should we bring our special guest in? Yes, I, believe... I feel like we should stand up to greet them. That's a bit rude to, yeah. They've, they've not sent a request. I've only got a request from some random person. Oh, all right. Okay. Well, if our special guest is out there, can you can you send a request? Uh, I think you hit the little button down the bottom with like a, there's a button that says request to, to join. Oh, this is unprofessional of our guest. I, I messaged them before and said, be watching about the 15 minute mark. Send a request. We'll, we'll get you in. This is really disappointing. Well, I don't even know if I want to. I, I don't know. Nate, what to... kind of doll is that? Nate, what kind of doll is, doll, oh. doll is that? Oh, what do you mean? Did I hit the wrong button? Are we going to get some random cunt? What kind of doll is it? What, is, what, what do you call that? That's I a call fucking it my... Russian doll. You Whoa! Oh, look. What? Ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you, Nate and Josh, in person. Nice to meet you, Alex. <laughs> Alex Graham of Dog Biscuits fame. Dog Biscuits, big pandemic comic, winner of the uh, Beat uh, Studio Cartoonist Prize, uh, winner of the mm -hmm. Pucci Award in Spain, uh, very prestigious award, uh, previously won by Nathan Cowdery, John Pham, uh, great lineage of talent there. You can get Dog Biscuits from Fanographics. It's a banger. Alex also has a sub stack where she is uh, she's serializing the devil's grin currently. I, th I think these are sold out, Alex, directly from you. But John, yeah. P, John Porcelino at Spit and a Half still has copies of number two. That's right. Which does have a refresher in the front of uh, previously in the devil's grin. So if you're a Johnny come lately mm -hmm. that missed the first one, you can probably catch up, do your homework here. You'll feel like a fuckhead about it, but you can probably pull it off. I learned that from you, the, ca the catch up. 
Yeah, no, I stole it from television, like previously oh. on AMC's The Walking Dead. And I'm like, that's what happened last week on The Walking Dead. I'm so dumb and drugged out, I couldn't remember. So, you know, it helps. <laughs> I always hate those. I, I hate those. Uh, in the comics, it works, but in uh, like uh, on TV, those, those catch up when you're binge watching a show, it's so annoying. Well, when you're well, binging. True. You had a remote. But also, even if you're watching it every week, it's kind of, sometimes it's a bit patronizing. It's like, here's the thing that happened only one week ago, if you don't remember, you idiot. Hey, you stupid fucking brainless moron. <laughs> well, John, yeah. you're not working at the, you're not, you don't work at Kmart anymore, so these people, you know, they're, they're busy, they have lives, you know, they get home and yeah. they forget. <laughs> yeah, they're not some bougie cunt like you, sitting around drawing funny books all day and eating fucking burritos, <laughs> you privileged piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, you. That's anyway, lovely to have you on, Alex. This is a big get. Thank for you. So, uh, kayfabe had Klaus, and we were like, you know, what a fucking sad sausage fest. A bunch of white men yeah, yeah. box around. So we were like, let's yeah. get a woman on. Not, not I, I'm the first girl. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, the I'm first girl you've had on. Um, well, there was that time Nate wore a blouse. Whoa, was that four weeks ago? Bring that up now. I'm wearing a hair hat. I mean, you know, this is close, but you know, it was my mother's actually, so I appreciate. It. Yeah, you, um, you, you, <clears throat> you're working Nate, there, Alex. Nate is gonna come stay with me for three nights. Yeah, I Paul after I his 19-hour layover in oh, Las no. Vegas. Yeah, lay out gonna... fresh socks for him. Mm -hmm. He's gonna, gonna scoop. Be... He's gonna so, scoop uh... the litter boxes while he's here. <laughs> yeah. I'm, pre I'm prepared for any and all chores in earnest. Okay. <laughs> I've got well, some he, for you. He's a yeah. very good house guest. Uh, Jack and I had him here. He was absolutely great. I've heard horror stories about him punching holes in walls and shitting in toilets, like massive horse-sized <laughs> equine dumps that clog the pipes. But he didn't do that. He did very dainty little poopettes here, and it was very nice. Well, that's not what happened. Like Imagine... rabbit poops? Yes. <laughs> I believe, I believe you're mixing up some stories there, Simon. You're mixing up the narrative here. I almost flooded an entire bathroom, but it didn't have anything to do with feces. It was because of this, this, the handles. There was like five handles in the shower. I didn't know which order. And so I let them all free, and it was so cold. I was naked. It was so cold, you know? So I went in there, and I was just going to worry about it later, and I couldn't shut it off, and I was naked again, except now it was just wet. And I had to wake up the fiance. I had to wake up the. I had to wake up the person in the house I was staying. It was very embarrassing. Almost flooded. And I could have ruined that house. This was Ms. Harkness's house, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. I. I. I hate. I hate to embarrass her because of the, of the drain. But yeah. But she's very. She's very nice. young cartoonist Ms. Harkness. And so I. I. I, uh, I almost flooded the whole thing. I mean, I've. I've, I've told the story numerous times, but I'm. I'm clear in my name. Because I didn't, I didn't clog it in the toilet. I'm not that kind of guy. Really. <laughs> I won't tell anybody if you do. That's good. I, I did clog a toilet once in New York. Uh, I won't say whose no, toilet, but... but yeah, I did. I was terrified. I clogged it up. I, was like, oh, no. I use a lot of toilet paper when I do a poo. You know, I'm not like, you know, folding in one sheet and like you know, tearing the little bits, like trying to conserve it. Like, oh, I've got to conserve toilet paper. I'm not that environmental. You know, I'm out, I'm out, I go out every weekend, I get dolphins, I get my shovel, I scoop the whales and dolphins up off the beach and go on flipper, there you go. I'm very environmental, but with toilet paper, I'm, I'm wadding up like half a roll and like fucking, you know, mash. So I put like, it was like, imagine like eight big steaks in a toilet bowl. Um, and it really, <laughs> it really clogged it up. Uh, it's like two phone books and eight steaks. Uh, it was a lot for this small New York toilet to handle. Well, this is the thing here because you're old enough. You don't want to be walking around with smells coming out of your ass like that, like you're five and a half years old. You no. can't be walking around so itchy and you need to go somewhere else to fulfill. Uh, you can't do that. I carry a portable bidet with me at all times. This is another Kickstarter that I found. This is a portable bidet. <laughs> uh, it's, it's fantastic. Really? It, it's called the Happy Day Portable Bidet. And I carry it in my purse. And I can just spray my asshole down wherever I am. I'm at Taco Bell. I'm, I'm buying a chalupa. That's like Costco. Oh, yeah, Costco all the time. You know, all the hot dogs going down rough. You know, my, my bum starts whistling. It's like, thank God, I've got the Happy Day portable bidet, my little buddy. <laughs> I've used Have you used a real bidet before? 
I have in Italy numerous, numerous times. I have a very rich friend. His dad went and got – he's not that rich, but it's low-hanging fruit to say that because he's got to be. But if he's watching, he's not rich. Um, his dad put in a bidet in his house, and it was so fabulous. I couldn't believe it. It was like – Really? I don't care for them. Oh, really? You do? You enjoyed it? Go, go on. Yeah, go on, please. I really do. I, I, because I think about it like this: if you, if you were, if you were walking down, uh, say Josh is walking down Hollywood Boulevard and he steps in shit and then he cleans it off with his hand and he gets shit on his finger. As he does. He's not gonna go take a paper towel and wipe it off and call it a day. He's gonna go wash it. He's gonna go wash his hands. So if you get shit in a cavity of your body that's clogged up with 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 hair and stuff it's just like why on earth would you not wash i mean it's kind of insane to me so the problem with me is there's just like shit towels everywhere though there's just like a bucket in the corner of shit towels you know because you can't mm-hmm. use toilet paper because it'll all just disintegrate so you have to have like a special towel so it's like the no. coconino office my uh, italian publisher we'd gone out for a lovely truffle pasta I immediately shat it all out after a big strong cappuccino and five cigarettes in a row. And then I was like, oh, right, I gotta clean this mess up. I was like, it's just, I had to use this towel and it's still like, I don't want to go into too much detail, but it doesn't, it's just a gentle spray. It's not, it's not a cleaning. So you still have to scrub with the towel. And then there's just a bucket of like Giovanni's shit towels and like just everyone's shit towels. Who's washing the shit towels? Some poor person has to like, draw the short store and deal with all the shit towels. So I, the, the, the fact that there's a towel involved really queers the deal for me. I'm not, in, I'm not into them. I've never heard of that. Alex, you don't use the towel. How do you? Well, you just spray your bum and walk away. No, you do, you do one, one dry folded toilet paper. Which makes yeah. Well, it depends I what fly toilet paper. Anyway. I saw that on a renewable items website i saw like reusable toilet paper and i didn't know it was for after a bidet i thought people were just being more environmentally friendly by wiping their ass with like a towel that you have to wash and reuse it makes more sense after some water has been sprayed up there but i'm sure there's people that do recycle their toilet paper but nate I- nate you were gonna ask me oh. something yeah, I'm like dying to know what you had for breakfast today. <laughs> dying uh, to know. The, uh, I knew you were going to ask me that, and I don't usually do this, but I had a pumpkin spice latte from Starbucks because we took our cat to the vet today, and then I had a handful of beef jerky, and that's all oh, that shit. I've had so far. It was sounding pumpkin- really, it was sounding really Christian girl autumn. A mm-hmm. handful of beef jerky, and that just killed the whole image. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I usually will have like a bagel and cream cheese or something, but not today. What did you have? What did you have for breakfast, Nate? This, as well as as this. This. What are you holding I'll keep up? it so skinny today. <laughs> being so thin. What's that orange thing? Uh, Clementine. It used to be. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Clementine. It's on now. But just trying. I'm just. I'm just having bad time today. I've been so. I've been so busy. So I'm eating now, mm-hmm. and it's it's been great. You know what I've switched to because I hate stopping working to eat. I've switched to that stuff called Huel, H U E L, and uh, it's disgusting. But it it does the job. It's called Huel. Can... Huel. Yeah, I don't know why it's called that. It's basically it's like... like soylent. Soylent. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like a disgusting the, powder, uh-huh. I'm just thinking of the big guy from uh, Breaking Bad. Wasn't that Huel, one of uh, Saul's, uh, uh, if you've seen that show? Yeah, isn't that? That's the uh, Lavelle the big, Crawford's character. Yeah, yeah, it just makes me think of him anyway. It's not related. Yeah. Huel, yeah. Like after I drink it for a long time. But, uh, Talking about Soylent last week. Huel. I keep Soylent. getting these, I keep getting, uh, I keep seeing these, like, uh, these new square meals, they're just like a little, uh, oh, yeah. it's like a little square pat, pat it, patty thing. And it's just like, it'll be like a spinach risotto or something. Yeah, that's really weird. Yeah, yeah. If I'm, if I'm going to eat without thinking and just do it to fuel myself, I don't need it to taste like anything. If I want a meal, uh-huh. I'll make a meal. You know. <laughs> 
not a square. How many times are you doing the, the Uber Eats, Alex? Um, during the pandemic, it was a lot. And then yeah. over the last year, they've raised their rates so much that it, it costs like $50 just for two poke bowls now. Yeah, yeah. yeah so gonna, we're, we have to be really lazy to want to spend $50. I remember during the pand at the beginning of the pandemic, I was getting like irrationally annoyed at this guy who was like my next door neighbor who would get delivery three times a day every meal. Oof. And it's none of my business, but I don't know it would make me so mad because I'd always be outside like smoking cigarettes, and if I go outside, he's always getting food delivered. I know people that are always on the internet asking people for money that are ordering DoorDash for every single meal. And it's like, dude, you probably wouldn't need to be asking for money if you didn't order so much DoorDash. That's the one place though. That's the that's their one pleasure in life because you know when they're when they're eating the DoorDash, everything melts away. Yeah. <laughs> it does have that effect. I won't yeah. do it anymore. I, I, I drive or ride to pick things up. It's like you say fifty mm -hmm. bucks. Like there's certain places we go locally and Literally, like you know, tax, fees, tips. You're paying fifty bucks mm -hmm. extra on top of your meal, so it, it fuck, yep. fuck that. It's out of fucking. It's not control. worth it at all. No, and exercise as well. It's good to go out and get some fresh air and some exercise and get out of the fucking house. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm so glad I just discovered this uh, Taco King next to me. Boom. <sighs> I, I, prefer I would love to live next to a taco was... place. A taco place? What? What about? Oh, I said I would love to live next to a taco place because uh, back when I lived in Colorado, there was Mexican food everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, after I moved to Seattle, all of my favorite foods are nowhere near me anymore. There's no green chili anywhere. No breakfast burritos. Green chili? Isn't that like a, uh, what's it? Is that like the, uh, the same thing that's uh, famous in New Mexico? Yeah, I think so. If you if you were to ask me what's in it, I don't know. I just know it's called green chili, and it's a uh, what's that place on Capitol Hill? It's sort of like near the park and stuff, near the chop, near the Chaz. Carmelo's. Maybe no. Jack and I used to go. That's not bad. They have got some good wet burritos, and hmm. I don't know. It's a little. They got a shitty little drive-through. It's kind of like a small little crappy oh, place. Oh, okay. I know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, that place is good. I haven't. I forgot about that place. Yeah, that place is all it's right. I miss that place. So it's in here where I live. It's just all fucking Del Paco and Taco Bell. It's no legit yeah. shit. Yeah, it was next to the yeah. weed store, right? Uh, what's it called? Uh, the big weed know. store. Yeah, it's oh. Uncle Uncle Dykes or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was right outside of there. Yeah, there might have been an Dykes there. I don't know. Yeah. God, I miss Seattle food. I miss Bartle Corso. I miss Salumi. There's so many little hole in the wall mm. Italian joints in Seattle. I just, I, I kill. I, it's all chain didn't you, where I am. It's horrible. Didn't you love Petty Rosso? I did love Petty Rosso. Yeah. They, they're gone now. Like, I know. Everything's I, gone. I fucking it's heard. Sad. I think Cafe Press mm -hmm. is gone as well. Yep. That's so mm. fucked up. I know. Everything's gone. The it's like that in Chicago. It's like any time I look up a place I liked, it's now like a uh, one of like one of my favorite places in Chicago is now a uh, it's a sandwich shop that like uh, it's like Saved by the Bell '90s themed sandwich shop. Sorry, what? Mm. Oh, Rancho Bravo was the taco store in Capitol Hill. Thank you. Oh, okay. I'm writing it down. Yeah, Rancho Bravo. I think they might have the green. Uh... The green salsa green. stuff there. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they had, green Jack green. used to get cups and cups of like extra sauces and it seems pretty legit there. Like, you know, I don't know. Check it out. Might, might be all right. You're not in that yeah. area there anymore though, are you? No, we, uh, as Nate is about to find out, we live right next to the highway and there's really well, nothing to do over here for a 20 year old. So, um, you're going to have to do a lot of walking uphill. If you, you, want got no, you got no, there's no pogs or power rangers over there. The stuff that Nate likes. <laughs> no, no, we live right next door to a cool bar, but I don't think they're gonna let you in there. No, it's the thing is, there's nothing for a 20 year old to do because the things you can do, you're too young for like stuff that like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't really. 
I don't really do anything anyway, so it's cool. We, we, went, to have... Chuck e. we went to Chuck E. Cheese when you came to my house, took you and Jasper <laughs> to Chuck E. Cheese, gave you boys some, some tickets. Jasper wanted to go. I yeah. I didn't want to embarrass him, but I, I mean, that was... You, you, you fingered that girl at the back behind the ski ball, though, remember? That attendant. <laughs> Dude, that was... No, that was me. You saw you saw Jasper's fingering me. Right. In the ball pit. <laughs> Just Jack's sending me links. Jack, Jack's coming and telling me the names of restaurants, sending me links. I, I'm in the middle of a live stream. I, don't, I can't look at links. <laughs> you come in the room. Why didn't you join? I'll look at those links later, Jack. Thank you for sending those links through. Wait, what's this? Why is it all Chinese? Where? What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Sounded a bit racist, Josh. Oh, why is it in Chinese? A bit angry. Josh, if you scroll up a bit, people are commenting in Chinese. Josh, we, we, I think you really just need to on this Google Pixel has taken over your life, man. It's we got 26,000 views over the last week, Josh. Of course, we've got people from all different countries. Don't freak out, Josh, but people of other <laughs> nationalities and races may watch our show. It's okay. Josh, your phone seems to be doing pretty well so far. Yeah, you know what? This morning, so I deleted every photo on my phone of, uh, <laughs> of a drawing. <laughs> Because I don't, you know, I don't need them. And then I, uh, yeah. and I deleted all the like app data stuff. And yeah, so it's holding up finally. <laughs> so you just have Pretty a grid. Did you delete all the pictures of, of you and Bingo? No, Bingo's. I I can't, I can't delete pictures of Bingo, but I deleted all like uh, just anything I don't need. You delete the pictures of uh, of of us. No, just like sometimes I'll take pictures. I'll I'll take a lot of pictures of drawings when I'm working on them, for no reason, and I never look at them again. So I just deleted thousands of pictures of drawings. I like those. I like I do the same thing, but I like to look back on them. Alex, you do that? You're always yeah. Making... For some reason, for some reason, when I take a picture of something, it helps me see it in another in another yeah. room. So I yeah. like if I think something is finished and then I look at it a picture on my phone, I can notice that I missed something. I don't know why it's like that. But. I, I like that the backwards trick is you could flip something on a phone. I saw Nick Renasso mm. talking about it, his little doco and I used to do it on a light box. You flip it over and it you can just suddenly see all the imperfections and like, wow, that looks shit. <laughs> like that's terrible. Well you don't need to do all that. You can just hold it up to a window. Yeah, yeah. Or a mirror. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You don't even need a light mm -hmm. box. Josh Pettinger's thrifty tips. Yeah, yeah. You want to know? Um, I, I, I kind of cheated on, on a couple things in my last comic, The Devil's Grin. I was finished drawing a panel, and it was immaculate and perfect, but I realized that they were walking in the wrong direction. So I took a picture of it on my phone, and I flipped it, and I just printed it on my printer, and I pasted it down. <laughs> Wow. Cheater. That, that's fantastic. I love you didn't do it on Photoshop or anything. You just like yeah, took a picture on your just... phone and printed a phone picture. That's incredible. Yeah, I had to print uh... like seven seven of them because I couldn't get the size right. So I kept printing it over and over until it was the right size. I love that. I love that so much. Yeah, but fuck I... all these oh, posh kids sure. and their computers. You post a lot of like pages in progress on your story, but like what? Is the are the sticky notes so that it's not a spoiler for Instagram? Or are you doing that every time you finish a panel to keep track? It's because when I get stoned and I work on something, I have a tendency to overwork it if I keep oh. looking at it. <laughs> so, I cover, so I cover it up with a sticky note, just so, like like horses, they have the blinders. Yeah. You know? I cover it up with a sticky note so I can't see it. Wow, <laughs> that's so amazing. Yeah. I, I, I do I, notice. Oh, no, please. Go I, I, on. Just, I was just going to say that I do notice that um, the pages that I force myself to draw when I'm not stoned come out a lot neater and more correct on the first time around and have less mistakes, but I just can't. But I love drawing when I'm stoned. I can't, I can't stop. Me too. Oh, I can't do it. There's no, there's no way I could ever draw stoned. Wow. What do you feel like when you're stoned? Do you like getting stoned, Josh? Well, I get stoned every night to fall asleep. If I get stoned in like in the daytime or anything like that, I'm just like, I just start thinking about like 
dying, <laughs> being like 80 years old in a bed sit with no money and no, like, no one loves me. And just, like, just like the worst, <laughs> most horrible yeah. thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's it's funny though because I kind of get that too. I have horrible thoughts, but it cause it for it for, but it, they're kind of fun. Like I kind of like being scared when I'm stoned. Like I get, I, I, can't, I can't leave my house or anything, but it makes me hyper focus on my art because I don't want to do anything else but the art. So there's no way I'm going to get distracted for like five hours. That's what I love the most about it. <laughs> Yeah, do you, do you pencil stone at all, or is it, you only save it for when you're inking, Alex? Sometimes I pencil first just so that I don't forget something that's important yeah. that's supposed to happen. But And also, sometimes I will I will letter first before I get stoned, because yeah. sometimes when I'm stoned and I'm trying to letter, I'll, like, skip a whole word in the sentence, or I'll skip a letter in a word or something. But I don't yeah. do that when I'm not stoned. Yeah, it's it's honestly one of my favorite things to do, I, and I always kind of feel guilty for it. So it's it's nice to hear that you do it too. And yeah, it's my favorite thing. I Thank remember you. when I was when I was first getting stoned in my early twenties. I was like, oh no, this is like this this shit makes me want to do art so much, and it, <laughs> it's like it's like a superpower. I should not start relying on this to do art, and then I just ended up relying on it a little bit. To do, it. I can still do art without it, but it's just not as fun. I like that. Fun. No, yeah. it's definitely. Um, I, I, I've done like trials where I've like you know I'll work a whole day completely sober, or you know have a puff mm -hmm. of a you know jazz cigarette, and it locks me in. I just work so much faster and, and better. Same with Red Bull. I, yep. I work so much better, like full of synthetic uh, caffeine and taurine. Uh, it really. I like uh, if I'm just like. Oh. I like, there'll come a point in the drawing, like, around, like, if I'm still drawing around six or seven, I'll start drinking red wine. And so there's, like, just the, like, the bit between being tipsy and sober, but just drinking wine. I like that part of the drawing, but, you know, yeah. then it crosses over until I can't get, like, the lines right and stuff like that. But there's, a there's like, a sweet spot with drinking wine for me. Yeah, I don't think anyone can draw completely drunk. I mean, uh, Tony Millionaire, yeah. actually. Tony Millionaire, brilliant draftsman, brilliant artist. He, I think he was fucking blotto or blackout drunk for most of his career. He's sober now, but he he was pulling it off. I guess it is possible, but not for me. Oof. Yeah. I can't do it at all. And I I used to think I could do it. I used to think it's fuck people that say they can't draw drunk. I know I can do it. And then I try to do it, and it's just like I fall I fall asleep or start crying while I'm working on because you're just sitting there with, it, you know, it's hard to be drunk and silent in a room for like. With, you know, so yeah, but booze is a. Song. At your age, Nate, because like drinking is like you get excited and you're like, yeah, but like now I drink and I'm like relaxed and I'm, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I miss. I, I'm I, drunk. I don't want to draw. I don't oh, drink too much anymore because it makes me sick. But I, uh, I miss I miss drawing and painting when I was drunk because it made my lines so loose and flowy, and I can't really pull that off when I'm sober. But drinking makes me sick now. I can't even drink at all anymore, even one drink. Yeah, oh, you're, you're obviously so... in a good, good, good. You're in a good fortnight here, Alex. Obviously, I just read your uh, PMDD essay on your Substack oh, last yeah. night. I think I was talking about alcohol listed in there, but I mean, we used to get drunk a bit together, but uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was, I was thinking like you, you said you couldn't be on manga chat last week. You wanted to do it this week. And I was like, ah, it must be the PMDD. Yeah. My whole, I have to schedule my whole life around that shit. Now it wasn't, it wasn't bad before I was still functional before the pandemic, but COVID fucked me up. I must have like long COVID or something that affects it. But but yeah, send me, down, awesome. send me down a rabbit hole after reading your essay, just like reading about it and women's experiences with it. It's, it's fucked mm -hmm. up. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really sounds, you know, horrendously debilitating. Uh, I saw, I saw a horrible um, article about this girl who suffers with cluster headaches, which are also called mm -hmm. suicide headaches because they're so bad that people will kill themselves because it's so painful. And she went to the doctor to get a sp specific medicine for it that would 
like take them away and he refused because she's still of childbearing age and it oh. could affect her potential fetus that she doesn't even have yet. I saw there's like there's like a TikTok. There's, there's this, the lady was on like TikTok talking about that. Yeah, that's that's the one. Yeah. Absolutely, it's the fucking disgusting. That's a cunty doctor. Yeah. Yeah, he's probably got his wife locked up at home and his daughter's in a cage or something, feeding him dog food when he gets back home. Likes to control women's vaginas. So I'm going to control your vagina. It's crazy that that people prioritize a, the life of a fetus that doesn't even fucking exist yet. It's weird. It's bizarre. Yeah, yeah no, if you're having fucking suicidal cluster headaches, that's kind of, in my mind, if I was a doctor, it's like, well, you know, that's that's taking precedent there, you know. Yeah. So, you, you know, let's, let's, let's make an informed decision, young young lady. Um, yeah, yep. it's not, it's, you know, yeah, so there's some cunty doctors out there. Yes, sir. But, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's fucked up, though. That, that article really, yeah, it got to me. It's just, it's just the horror of daily life, like two weeks mm -hmm. a month, you're just fucked. Like, just this chemical assault. Yep. It's, it's brutal. And, and I'm yeah, just... yeah. And I just have to lay in bed, and I've been meaning to get a Nintendo Switch to play right. because yeah. I used to I used to play video games a lot when I was in my teens, and I was I sunk a lot of time into, especially the the ones where it's like multiple. What do you call it when you're playing online with a bunch of different people, like yeah. first person shooters? I oh, used yeah. to play those a lot, but like, I think. Well, yeah, I, you could... Yeah, but I was just I was just going to say I I sh I should start playing video games again because that's a good way to pass my time. Yeah, Instead 200, of uh, 200 bucks you could get a Switch Lite and then you get Fortnite for free and then you just go around student cunts and and Zelda as well you could cruise around Zelda for like 300 hours just like beating the fuck out of people taking your aggression out on them. Like, you fucking die. Yeah. You fucking orc. Is yeah, there yeah. are there any games where you can like play because I like the social aspect of of video games. I don't like I don't like one player games because it makes me feel lonely. Yeah, yeah, well Zelda's a bit lonely, I guess. But Fortnite you're yeah. online, you can yell at people. Oh, Mario Kart you can yell at kids on there. You'd probably be better off with like a PlayStation because I think that's much more socially yeah. driven. Uh, Nintendo's a bit they're very safe. They really want to protect children from being called fags online or like, you know, whatever slurs people are going to throw out. They don't want mm -hmm. that. So if you know if you want to get called a bunch of slurs, go on the PlayStation network. Uh and if you want to yell at people, if you want to be like, yeah, fucking dumb cunt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe I, get a cheap I, uh, PS4. Yeah. Um, people, people when, I when I was on the headset, when I was a teenager playing SOCOM, do you know SOCOM? Uh, no. it's, it's a propaganda game. Okay. Where you, you're, you're either the, the soldiers on the U.S. side or you're the terrorists. <laughs> I, I spent like hundreds of thousands of hours on that game but people would call me a little boy because they thought i was a little boy on the headset <laughs> yeah but anyway i, I play um, my I, splatoon a lot anyway. well you what you what else oh i was just gonna say i i have some books that i read recently that i, I want to talk about oh please if yeah. you don't mind yes please. i read this i read this ultrasound which was um Jake, Jacob Covey told me that he sent this and Dog Biscuits to the printer on the same day. Ooh. So, so that's that's pretty funny. That's a hot but, duo. Um, hmm? That's a hot couple of books. A hot duo. Oh yes, yes. Have you guys read this? No, I've read but the they're... first two chapters in the breakdown editions. Okay, okay, okay. In um, Philadelphia, the... there's a, an art show exhibition of all of the original art for that, and it's insane to see all. Oh. Airs that he did for the uh, the collars and stuff. It was at Partners. Yeah. And... Partners and stuff. But yeah, Connor Schulte is a brilliant cartoonist. Yes, the art is beautiful. I love the story. It was very intriguing. One problem I did have, though, and this is just a personal preference problem, is that I had a hard time keeping track of what was happening in the story because uh... I have like facial blindness, so I had a hard time like telling characters apart which is why I use anthropomorphic characters in my comics because I need to be able to like oh that's that guy that's that guy so that that was a problem for me um reading it but that's that's a weakness on my end it's not a weakness of the book and then um I had my husband Patrick read it and then we both watched the movie together 
Yeah, I need to watch the movie. Need to watch the movie. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was good. I really liked it. Yeah, the first two chapters were mind blowing, especially the first one. I was just so it was one of my favorite comics of 2016 or wherever it came out. It was, mm-hmm. it was brilliant. The pacing's incredible. The, the the lighting, the drawing, it's lovely. Yeah. yeah, he stayed at my house a couple of months ago. Connor, it was, it was lovely to see him. He's a very funny gentleman. He left his yeah, shirt. Yeah, he seems really funny. He left his shirt. It was a businessman's shirt, but screen printed on the back was sluts. For a new green deal so it was like business and activism together it was uh it was an interesting shirt he, he left it here he must be like he must be upset alex yeah. i know that you had chosen to, to do the anthropomorphic characters because of that it makes a lot of sense because you, you do all the ears and and stuff and the snout yeah all, I, I read them sometimes and it's just like I always feel like it would it's I'm just like so glad that they're not human I feel like I would I would be um I would probably ju- like judge them more like instinctually if they were human I feel like the, the, yep. the animalness of it just makes it so much more lovable and forgiving relate yeah relatable yeah and it's better than Nate's reason which is just I want to have sex with a horse oh my <laughs> gosh I never drew that <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, never... I, I honestly, when I'm, when I'm reading comics and there's too many humans, I, I like them less. I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. me too. I don't like people. Yeah, yeah, I don't like people. That's, that's why, yeah. Yeah, I find it I feel like I'm being people. attacked by you three animal drawers. <laughs> well, Josh, got some humans there, too. You, you really got to step it up one of these days. Draw a dog. Uh, Nate does half humans, half dogs and horses. He, he goes mm-hmm. both ways. There's, there's yeah. going to be animals soon. But if, if we're plugging books, I've got to plug this uh, jean Vive Castre collection. It, it is from Drawn and Quarterly, <laughs> but I'll forgive that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just beautiful. I, I, this is a $100 book. I got this for 50 bucks on Amazon. I don't, I don't care. I buy books on Amazon sometimes. I save 50 bucks, you know. I can think they must have bought, like, I think they buy like a fuckload of the books and they blow them out at a discount. Cause it's like a new release, mm. like 50 off, like, I was like fucking hell. But yeah, I, I was friends with jean Vier. We used to email before she passed away in 2016. I'm friends with her husband, Phil Elvram, who put this together. But this is a beautifully put together, just collected works of, of jean Vier. This is everything she managed to create between 1981 and 2016. Um, it's very depressing when she, passed away but uh yeah there she is there but anyway you got susceptible a graphic novel in here and just all this all the record art she made from her music stuff and just beautiful beautiful paintings and there's just some some lovely she stuff. passed away last year right or 2016 i think or oh, 20, 2016. Okay. 2017 i think perhaps uh i think it was a year after alvin and carl died i think it was 2017 i, I forget now but there's a lot of death around that time david bowie died my good friend david bowie died <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this this book is beautiful. I I, I wept. So I, I flipped through this last week for about an hour, and then got to the end and just sort of had a bit of a weep. Uh, beautifully put together. I still need to read the whole introduction by Phil, who is one of my favorite musicians, and I think an incredible writer, one of the most human mm-hmm. writers that exists and can write about nature like nobody else. So I love Phil's writing. So it's a, there's a very long introduction where he's writing about Jean Vierve and her life and. I'm imagining how much he loved her and how much he misses her and just life and death. Um, and I imagine it's going to make me cry like a motherfucker, like his album, uh, A Crow Looked at Me, that came out after she passed. Uh, but yeah, you know, go go get the jean Vierre Castre book. It is 50% off on Amazon. Um, and it means drawn a quarterly, get less money. They got less of my money, maybe. I kid, I kid. But yeah, it's a lovely book. I kid. Has anybody read this? This is one of my favorite books of, uh, I think it was, it, it, maybe it didn't come out last year, but I bought it last year. It's called Together. Malek Zertal. I don't know how to say her name. Oh, yeah. I love Malek this, so good. this is what I do. This is my life. I like to do this. I go to the Partners and Son comic book store. And if I'm, I, if, I'm, if I'm dropping off books there and they're buying books off of me, I'll go get a slice of pizza afterwards. And I spilled so much grease. On this, because uh, I was yeah. reading, I'm reading it, and I'm you know having a good old time eating the slice. And... But there's some beautiful. I'm in the top of this page here with the hamburger. 
man. Yeah, she's great. I just got her porno book from uh, B.D. Carl, like uh, Le Requins Marteau, a French publisher, puts out a porno line and they put out a big, thick porno book by her. It's not super smutty, but it's beautifully drawn. No, she's I, great. Do you like that? It would be very tasteful and like not too crass. It's always nice. Yes, it's erotica, erotica. Yes, yes. Yeah, you know, she gets ripped off a lot. There's a bunch of male exertal uh, rip-offs on Instagram and stuff. Just like, you know, I, uh, young... Young women with no style of their own who are just stealing her style. That's what you do when you're young. I mean, I was a big CF uh, Ben Jones ripoff when I was younger. Um, we all have to work through our influences, you know. Yeah, for better, for better or for worse. Yeah, she, she's great. She's lovely as well. I hung out with her, I think, 2017, maybe when she came to Short Run with Antoine Maillard. And uh, she's a very lovely person, very, very warm and, and friendly and funny. Uh, yeah. I'd like so, her to know time can you please make it pizza gr pizza grease proof because... yeah those, just... those riso books you got to look out for your pizza grease i know i guess it was a mistake i'm treating it like it's you know like it's a playboy it's no it's no playboy well, there's there's frederick Lystring in the comments there correcting people about names and stuff good old frederick uh, check out De grimma svardet from swedish yes. publisher Lystring four lag some good stuff there Oh, some good stuff. So many amazing recommendations today. Now, I just got to jump in, guys, and say I think this might cut out. The last the last week has cut out after an hour. For some reason, Instagram was letting us do two-hour streams, but I'm fearful that this is going to randomly cut out at the one-hour mark, which is in about four minutes. So I'm just, you know, if we could perhaps come back. We could just we could just shut this down ourselves in a minute or two, and then just come back. I don't part know, what two? do you want to do? Yeah, Pate, part two, if you want to chat There's for a lot longer. I'd still like to ask Alex. It would be a shame for it to end now. Indeed. So I think we can just... I would I'll love just... to keep chatting. Yes, we're all working. We, we're all chatting. I think I'll just maybe shut this down now, and then we can just come back. So everyone, we're just going to shut this down for two minutes, go and do a quick poo. Um, we'll be back in like two or three minutes, and we're going to continue manga chatting. I'm just, uh, I'm going to shut this down and post this. And we'll be back in a few minutes with Alex Graham. And there'll be more manga chat. Yippee! There's part two of today's Manga Chat. Welcome back. We had a break. Welcome back. Part two of Manga Chat. Part two. Going to be back with uh, Nate Garcia. Going to be back with Alex Graham. Going to be back with Josh Pettinger if his fucking Google Pixel's cooled down. Here's... Classic commercial break. Welcome back. Wow. It's kind of cool, though. It's kind of like, it's like TV. It's just like a, like the Dick Cabot show or something. I love Dick Cabot. Oh, my gosh. There's nothing like getting really high drawn in Dick Cabot and pretending like it's not 2021. Wait, what year is it? 2022. Ugh. 2022, really? Pretty gross. That's disgusting. <laughs> Welcome back, Jeff. Manga chair. Mate, does your chair revolve? Uh, no, my chair evolves. It gets better each day, the more I sit. Welcome back, Alex. Boom. Great. Boom. I, Boom. I grabbed Boom. your newest book. I actually, I went to my room and went, went to go grab it. Everybody can go get it. Oh, yeah. Oh, everybody can go get this. If John Porcelino doesn't run. Yeah. He's going to be running out today with the 26,000 Manga Chat viewers. Everyone's going to go and get the the, the, the new Devil's Grin from, from John P. It's spit and a half. John Porcelino, a lovely man, a lovely gentleman. Now, Alex, when I got this, I was so fucking excited. I flipped through it, and I couldn't believe it, and I read it, and I was posting so many panels on my on my Instagram story. Yeah. People got to see this stuff, and I can't believe my mistakes. I put... Yeah. I put so many spoilers. Oh, and Frank, Santoro got pissed at you, yeah, right? Yeah, so I was going to say, Frank was like, you oh, fucking clown. Uh, I thought you were going to say, I made a mistake because it actually sucks. No, oh my <laughs> God. It was, better than, it, it was better than first glance of like, the first glance excitement of like, 
you know, very uh, quickly reading stuff out of context. And then yeah. it, all in context, I couldn't believe it. Like, I feel like I'm there. Oh, that's so awesome. Thank you. I, I, I read I the first. I haven't that much feedback about it yet, so. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. insane. That. I read both back to back, the first and the second one. And there was a mouse outside of my apartment dying for like two weeks. <laughs> and so I kept thinking about Two about, weeks? Yeah, it was just a can. Like nobody was cleaning it up. I wasn't touching it. But I just kept on thinking mm -hmm. of uh, fucking uh, his, his mom and, and like when he was a baby. I oh, like yeah. That memory's just got to be so up in his head. And like, like, no wonder he's such a piece of shit. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> well, I, it just it just stuck cool. in my visceral. Yeah. That's cool that you have a cosmic thing too. I have it right here. This was yeah. the first comic that um somebody offered to publish for me. Yeah. And uh it's hard it's hard, hard for me to look at now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it shouldn't be easy to look at old drawings because you're better now. Yeah, like, that's that means you've gotten better for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't look at anything that's recent. Even recent stuff sucks to me, but I, I like this a lot. That was pretty cool. Oh yeah, uh huh. Yeah. There's a lot of, like a lot of times you can tell like when something's drawn from a picture and something's drawn from like a mirror. I honestly can't tell mm -hmm. if you <laughs> both. I prefer picture in a mirror. I, I prefer to do self portraits from a mirror because mm -hmm. I, I don't know something about photographs. I don't know. Yeah. They just, they, yeah. I, I, I feel like they photographs don't really, especially photographs, modern photographs don't really capture somebody's uh, real spirit, you know? Oh my God. The, the mirror is alive. Yeah. I just can't draw a likeness. I think that's like, I'm always, Impressed by people who can draw likeness. Me too. I feel like facially blind. Like you said, you're face blind, Alex, but you, you're a yeah. great caricaturist and you can really oh, do a thanks. fucking portrait of someone. I, I, I cannot. Uh, thanks. I don't know. Yeah, when I'm, when I'm drawing somebody, I'm really like looking, looking, looking at their face. But like when I'm watching a movie that has too many like white people in it, I cannot tell <laughs> any, any of them apart. I yeah, have they look ask, alike, I'm... all those fucking whiteies. <laughs> I have to keep I'll asking, say it. asking Patrick to uh, to tell me who that is again, like the, the <laughs> annoying cliche about women watching movies. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Uh, Alex Graham, annoying woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I embrace it. Uh, yeah, I gotta I gotta bring this up. Uh, Josh, uh, did you eat these noodles I gave you? Yeah, I ate both packets in one day. It's the Indomie Migarang fried instant noodles. Yeah, so I was amazed. There's like five separate sachets. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. many flavors. It's like, yeah, I, was like, I agree. Probably the best noodles out there. Best you've, got your, yeah, you've got your sweet soy sauce, like a K-Cap Manis. You've got your chili sauce. You've got your uh, oniony grease, uh, the oil pack. Then you've got the bum, bum seasoning. And the crispy onions. Yeah, see, yeah, it's yeah. one of the things. I, I lay out a bit of paper and you have to, like, I cut all the little bits out individually and I lay them out. Then I put noodles in the pot and I cook them up and then I strain them and use the little scissors. I put all the sauces in one by one. I, I do add in some extra K-Cap manis. So I bought extra sweet, thick uh, soy sauce. So I, I put a, I want a little bit more. But they're lovely noodles. These I've been having these for, like, have you ever seen these, Alex or Nate, these noodles, the Indomie noodles? No. no. I, I grew up on these in spicy? Australia. Oh, very spicy. Oh, yeah. yeah I usually spicy. have to add so much salt to those instant noodles, but those, like, I didn't need to add any these. salt. But yeah, I had these in Australia. I found them in London, and now I can get them at, like, the Ralphs down the road in, like, Santa Clarita. Like, they're everywhere around the world, I'm, like, for decades now. I think, uh, the comments are probably blowing up with people like, yeah, love fucking Indomie noodles. Like, if you're an artist and, like, you need to eat cheap, I mean, Alex, you're on the, uh, what was it, fuel? You're on your uh, yeah. Soylent fuel. This does but take that, a bit of time. But that's more out of laziness than, 
I mean, I'm too cook. lazy to cook these. I, I got like 12 packs behind me. I, you know, I, I cooked them once, but you know, I'm too lazy. And it's just, I just won't have lunch. I'll just keep working and eat my own stomach lining. <laughs> but if you can be fucked and if you're on a budget, you know, it's probably like 50 cents or something. And it's, you know, you put two of them together. That's a dollar. You got a good meal. You put a beer in the equation as well. You have these with a fucking cold beer. Oh, there's nothing better. There's really nothing better. No, I got excited because there, there's a packet. There's like a packet of noodles uh, at the Arco by my house. And I thought it was the same ones because they look very similar. But these ones were Oriental noodles. So, Yeah, no, these, these are hard to find sometimes. But if you look around, you can get them. You can get them online. I, I bought them in bulk online because the supermarket sold out, like supply chains or something. I was like, where are the fucking noodles? And then they only had the hot and spicy variety. There's different varieties. This is the original. But these are the best ones. Uh, but yeah, I've got them online. But I can give you more next week, Josh. On Friday, if you come out, I'll give you more. Oh, I would, yeah, absolutely. I'm just glad so you're good. enjoying them. But, yeah, really top noodle. You can add an egg. Yeah, see, I, sometimes I'll add some peas or some corn niblets. So that's just a serving suggestion with a fried egg on top. Incredible. You, you'd be going off to heaven. Yeah, I won't be adding an egg, but I will be enjoying them. And just quickly while I'm plugging noodles, I've got to plug my prints as well from the secret headquarters. You can get these two Simon Hansel and prints. You've got the classic uh, couch-based variety or the explosive uh, crisis zone variety. These are $40 a piece. They are signed and numbered. We've sold a good amount of them, but they're not selling as fast as I would have liked. Uh, so up your game, fans of Megan Mog. Get your shit together. Um, Posh-ass noodles. Someone just said they're posh noodles. They're like 50 cents a pack. Oh, fucking commentators, I hate you all. Anyway, go and buy the fucking cheap noodles and go and buy the prints. Instead of buying posh noodles, because they're not posh, go and buy the prints. They're from Secret Headquarters. <laughs> Someone said bought both came today. I hope you're happy with them. Um, you can come all over them. But yeah, Simon, please buy the rest of the prints. You're going to be child stuck to feed. Those noodles. You're going to be stuck eating those noodles if nobody buys those prints. So they, they, that was a good reason to bring them up. Well, I won't be able to afford anything except for those noodles. My child and wife and I will just be eating those cheap noodles uh, unless we sell these prints. So really, if you care about me or Megan Mog at all, please go and buy the prints. Great Christmas gift. Uh, you know, Go and buy a, a Substack subscription for a loved one for Alex Graham. Like here, uh, you can draw a little card out and say, look, uh, in your name, I've subscribed to Alex Graham's Substack for $5 a month. <laughs> Merry Christmas. And you give them the card, they, they look at it and they're like, who? Like what? Like <laughs> devil's grin. I'm a Christian. What are you talking about? Devil's grin. I'm deeply offended. A mm. grinning devil. And then you know, they have a heart attack and they die. Merry Christmas. Awesome. Yeah. Now who else wants to plug anything? Josh, you've got power. Yeah, I'll plug. Um, yeah, my store. You can buy my comics. I, st- I have a, I have a couple shirts left just in size small. No one's ever going to buy those. Children's size power wash shirts. Yeah, yeah. And also, um, for people who don't want to pay like absorbent shipping rates, I've been Ooh. I've made a big PDF of every comic I've ever put out, and that's been selling pretty decently. So it's pay what you want, not pay if you want. By the way, some people got confused and think it was pay <laughs> if you want. It's not. It's pay what you want. Well, so you could pay like a cent. Yeah, I mean, yeah, pay what you want, but. Not pay if you want. Um, yeah, if you don't want to pay the shipping, just like uh, DM me and I'll send you the PDF. It's massive. It's got like yeah, slide 10 comics in the Josh's in it. DM. Slide on in. Now, Josh, you've made about $28,000 on that, right? I mean, I hate to let these numbers free, but you have made like $9,000, right? Didn't well, let's it? not go overboard, Nate. Come on. <laughs> It's, it's, it's just unbelievable to me. It's so happy, so happy to hear. If people think I'm making that kind of money, I'm not going to get any of the sympathy bites. So just, you know. <laughs> yeah, Josh is struggling, really. It's, it's a bit sad. We were talking yesterday. Josh was crying. Um, things are a bit rough for Josh right now. So, Right. Yeah. Don't, don't just give him a cent for his PDFs. Uh, maybe give him, like, 50 cents. I would hope people see through the veneer of, hyperbole here you know i'm only kidding thirty thousand dollars was not made for you not even close yeah oh it's good for people you know people like 
it's crazy shipping. Like even like I was, I shipped a comic to Canada the other day, and they they add that seven dollars like uh, duty thing. So people are paying twenty dollars to ship an eight dollar comic. It's crazy. Yeah, fucking Trudeau, fucking blackface bastard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I've got to ask you, Alex, you're in Seattle. Have you heard about the latest stuff, the drama with the, the dog fighting at the Fanographic store? <laughs> yes. I, 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 heard, I heard Larry's in prison. Is that true? Oh, really? Um, I heard he was, was arrested on suspicion. Like, like seriously, like, he's, he's, he's not getting out. There's no bail. That wouldn't surprise me based on everything I know about him. Yeah, yeah I, I've, I've lost track. I've been busy this week, but I, I was hearing some pretty disturbing stuff about more dead dogs being found behind the Fanographic <laughs> store and... And they're all little dogs too, like Dachshunds and Chihuahuas. Yeah, it was mostly Chihuahuas, but I'm hearing about some toy poodles and stuff. Uh, there are like at least 50 toy poodles uh, found out the back by the dumpsters. People are wondering, what is American football player Michael Vick doing at the Fantagraphics office? What? Really? No, I mean, <laughs> he's an American football player who got like arrested for dog fighting. Oh my god, really? Yeah. I didn't put two and two together when I heard that. Wow. That's why he's uh, hanging out there. Ah, shit, that makes sense. But yeah, not, I don't know. It's it's all it, chaos right now. Yeah. Again, I got my, my book coming out on the 8th, and I just I don't want to be drawn into this drama. I've, I've been, people all day are tweeting at me like, do you have a comment? Do you have a comment? Can you say something about all the dead dogs, all the toy poodles, and Larry being in jail? And it's like, I don't know. I don't talk <laughs> to Larry anymore. He sold me some bad pills a couple of years ago, so I don't talk to him anymore. <laughs> um, so I, I just, I look, I stop asking me. I, I don't know. I, should, I, should, I, I Why am I bringing it up? I mean, I'm really concerned about my book not selling because of all these dog fighting rooms, but I keep bringing it up. But I'm just, I'm confused. I'm upset. You know, please pray for me uh, in this time of, of dire straits. I bought Buddy Does Seattle and uh, uh, Eric. Reynolds told me that that Larry is in there a lot. Well, Larry's stinky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't want stinky to say is, that. <laughs> stinky is based on Larry. I think that's common knowledge. That's so funny. Oh my yeah. god, I love that. Uh, Larry's said, quite said, a character. Yeah, he said Larry used to be a wild man. Oh yeah, he still well, is. This, I guess this was public. I guess so. I talk about it, but just like. I just, you know, I, 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 I miss the events at the Fanographic store, but I remember, like, there were a bunch of kids there, and, like, you know, little kids at the event, and it was a nice event. Larry was up on the mic introducing some artists or something, and he just started talking about, like, oh, back in my heroin days. He's like, you know, you're all back in the <laughs> Oh, my God. And so I was looking around, and I was like, oh, these little kids here, Larry, like, don't, don't talk about your heroin days. But he's been off it. I mean, he's been clean for, like, decades now, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, he was friends with Kurt Cobain. He once asked me if I knew who Kurt Cobain was. Like, you ever heard of this kid? You ever heard of this mm -hmm. Kurt Cobain? I was like, yeah, I'm, I, I've heard of Kurt Cobain. <laughs> he was he was talking about Kurt Cobain last time I saw him. Yeah. But they, they were friends. Perhaps love you know, don't yeah. know. The rumors are out there that they fucked toy poodles together. And uh... My mother had tickets to see uh, Nirvana the day Kurt was found dead. Oh. Wow. So we... Uh, so I just remember, like, I remember as a kid, my mum coming home from London crying. And then I drew her a picture of Kurt Cobain, which was on our, our fridge feet, like, for years. Do you, do you still have that picture? I'd love to see it. No, I, I don't have the picture. But, it's, uh, but she has the ticket framed. And, uh, yeah, but very vivid not, But not your drawing. It was at the Brixton Academy with the Buzzcocks. Probably that would have been a good gig. It would have been a great fucking gig. Jesus. This building that I live in, a bunch of the, well, this this area was stomping grounds for some of the grunge rockers back in the nineties, and they used to they used to go to the bar next door, where my art's hanging, and be weird. Yeah, I'll bet. Like Mark yeah. Arm from Mud Honey used to work in the Fanographics warehouse. Oh. It shows how much money those guys were making back at the time if you're working at the <laughs> Fanographics warehouse. I would have thought Mud Honey were touring and making lots of money and stuff, but I guess not. Yeah. Well, they're yeah. probably only paying $200 for rent. Yeah, probably. 
Fuck the glory days back then. Like you know, you know, everyone bought their houses back in the eighties. Like Pete Bag and Eric Reynolds, they all got in before all the Amazon cunts ruined the fucking town. I would have loved to have bought a house in Seattle, but it's just impossible these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the whole city's falling apart. Let's not get into it. <laughs> I've never even. Well, we... So excited to see what it looks like. So excited to see what the sidewalks are like, the trees. The door. There's a trees. lot of hills. Get ready to walk up some hills. Oh my god, I, I can't. I can't even contain myself. I mean, it kind of looks. Like have a good time. That's not my window. It's a bit gloomy, actually. Oh yeah, I was. I was admiring that view last week when you showed it. Uh huh. Are we doing outside of our windows? Josh, I don't want to see KFC. See the KFC bucket. <laughs> What you got there? Uh, uh, the KFC bucket. bucket, not my chows. <laughs> a big bucket there. Oh no, that's beyond grim. Oh, what have I got outside my window? I got some. Uh, <laughs> I have a lovely. Uh, you see anything there? No. <laughs> no, it's just black. It's just black. Have I frozen? Yeah, yes. but we can still hear. Yeah. It. Yeah, it doesn't seem to want to flip the picture. Oh, there we go. I'll show you my outside. There you go. You can see my fire pit. Oh, my, my God. My birds of paradise. I remember I took a bath in that fire pit. That was great. It looks like Paris. <laughs> it looks like Paris. Alex, you really are right on the highway. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Do you ever, anytime there's like a, schizophrenia. Has the, has the president ever visited Seattle and you just see a big limo while I drive by your house? <laughs> no, but apparently uh, Kamala Harris was in town last night. So there was a bunch of he helicopters flying oh, around, geez. which was concerning. Jesus. What yeah. is she doing in town? Just laughing at things, just randomly laughing at things, things. <laughs> Getting asked questions, just laughing about them. What, what about the what about the border, Kamala? <laughs> yeah, yes. probably. Lots of awkward laughing. Fantastic, doing doing a bang up job. Simon, what is that? No, he's putting some people in putting some people in prison for smoking marijuana, perhaps, and then bragging about smoking marijuana herself. Anyway, what? what? Uh, I got I got to, yeah. I found out. I figured out a new way to ship comics. What? <laughs> okay, so you buy these priority boxes, medium, right? And they perfectly cut into four. They're free, obviously, at the post office, but they perfectly cut into four of these, and you just put the comic in, uh... and Frank Santoro doesn't complain that the edges get bent. <laughs> That's great. I love Isn't that genius? That it's genius if that's the kind Frank's of... Frank's a big complainer, but... Yeah. It perfectly fits four of these, each box. So I just go to the post office and take about, like, eight of them. You know, FedEx... That's really that good time. You can walk into FedEx and just take all their envelopes as well. You just walk out with, like, lots of boxes and envelopes. They don't care. It's great. Well, that's my new way. And then I... I accidentally just... ordered... The way I figured out, because I accidentally ordered too many of these envelopes... I can't just ship a comic in these. No. So, I, so I needed some cardboard. This is a hot tip for young cartoonists. Yeah. Josh, but this is the thing. That the, what about if I make a comic magazine size? That's not magazine size fitting at all. That's like superhero comic book size. Ooh. Not everybody's well, I would never print a comic at magazine size, Nick. Our, our very special guest. And if you do a comic at magazine size, Nate, you can probably just buy the large boxes. Oh, all right. I'll keep this in mind. <laughs> I really will. Yeah, you know, in this economy, it's not a good idea to print large right. magazine size comics. No. I'm, I'm really regretting my size right now. For shipping, comics. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. Josh and I are doing another comic size scene, and it's just going to be a, a bitch to ship. If we've done it smaller, it's cheaper and yep. better for Europeans. I feel well, bad charging people $14, but. 
What the little Nate's just gone. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm of the opinion like nowadays that I don't feel bad about how, like artists. Are the only people who feel bad about charging certain amounts, like Coca Cola, isn't like. Yeah, I'm thinking about the people in this neighborhood. I don't want them to like pay yeah. too much. So it's just like inflation, all this stuff. Just charge whatever is profitable, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Just cost what it's cost. Yeah, I think most people just throw our books out. They just do it to support us. They like our stuff on Instagram. So it's like, oh, give them a bit of money, get the book. I don't even care. You know, it doesn't show up in the mail. Like, oh, whatever. I was just tipping them. It's just like a Venmo tip jar, basically. They don't care about these paper products that we're shipping them. May as well just, we could probably just not even ship them. No one would notice. No one would complain. I'm getting called out. Yeah, I saw in that. In the comments. Josh, I bought a page from you, and the backing board was smaller than the page. Ooh, that's a bit rough. Poor Josh. Andy Whelan there. Well, I... Andy, the backing board probably shrank in the mail. <laughs> a likely story, of course. <laughs> Josh, yes. don't you... I, bought, I I traded a page with you, and it was not even a page that was printed in a goddamn comic. You say this every time, Nate, but <laughs> I do. You obviously don't have the version of the comic where that page is in. Oh, really? Because I didn't know Tinto Press was printing up variant covers, man. Var- var- <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they're not doing that. Pretty sure it's the same old book, but whatever, whatever makes you sleep at night. Alex, have you got any yeah. bug? I realized that that Josh and Simon well, had bugs, but you didn't. Um, I, first, I want to ask Josh a question. Last week, you said, or last week, Nate said that if you make a mistake on a page, you'll just redraw the whole page. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, not anymore. I used to. It's, it's, it was like an OCD thing. It's <laughs> like uh, I didn't want to oh, use white now. But... Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> that's one of my page. I've got one of the pages that he scrapped. So it's like a, it's like a doppelganger page, but I could tell I, I could tell immediately that it was not the right one because of the way you did the clouds. Yeah, I would, but when, I, uh, when, when Josh and I work out here together, like I, I, to fill in my heavy blacks, I use a big fat brush, a smaller brush for the edges, but then to fill in the air, it's a big mm. fat brush. I'm really slopping the paint down, and Josh will sit there with his nib, dipping and dipping back and forth, and he'll scratch out like you know like a big area of black here. You know, this is all black gouache or watercolor because I've sold out a fucking gouache at the fucking art store. Idiots. Mm-hmm. But this didn't take too long to fill in. But Josh would do it literally just like with a tiny nib, scratch, scratch, scratch. And if for, I, you, you, for a week or so, Josh, you switched to my method. And like, oh, of course, it makes sense. I'll do it blobbing it on. And it's, oh, this is much faster. But then I saw him again. He was just doing it with his little nib. And he just, he'd switch I'm back. I'm back on the it. brush. I'm, I'm back on the brush. Okay, you switch back. But what people don't realize is like, I've said this, but if you, when you do it, it scrapes up little bits of paper that balls up, and it spreads really fast and easy, just like a brush. Okay. But it's okay. not a... Yeah. It's just, you know, it's time saver to just do it with a big, big brush. Yeah. I mean, I mostly do it with a brush. It's, if something's really fiddly and small, I'll just use the nib, but... Because, like, look at this. I did this with a brush. His lapel on this one got all fucked up because I was using a brush. <laughs> That's a good face. But yeah, Alex, what, what else have you got to plug other than the John Force Like, How far are you in the next Devil's Grin? Is? Um, oh, I, yeah. I'm currently, well, this works out because I can't put my phone up anymore because I got charged. I'm working on this page right here. Um... It's backwards. Oh, so that's what happens. All right. <laughs> oh, spoilers. Oh, it's well, ruined. I'm not gonna, not, I feel uh, okay showing this page because it, the, nothing really happens on it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I oh, I wanted to say I've been doing so much research because this happens in the 70s, in 1974, uh, and obviously I wasn't alive back then. So I've had to do a lot of research to – It's I didn't anticipate that it would be this much work to – to do a story that's in the seventies, but it's a lot because you thought you thought you'd just watch Days and Confused and call it a day. It, well, <laughs> I thought I could watch Taxi, the, the show, and yeah. call it a day. <laughs> but um, so yeah, I I've been doing tons of research. I've watched hours and hours of videos in like in like care homes in the seventies, which 
thank God YouTube has exactly the videos I'm looking for. Like, <laughs> I, if if I was if I was doing this back in uh, before the internet, I would have to be spending all day at the library looking. All yeah, up. yeah, um, microfilm. That's how people used to do it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but thank God YouTube has so so many reference videos that are just perfect. And uh, yeah, I basically know what exactly what jobs they're working and it, but it, it's funny because do you, do you guys find that when you're when you're doing a lot of research like that, it kind of like depletes your creative energy for the day? Because the day that I woke up trying to research this care home job, I spent like an hour and a half just watching videos about it. And then after that, I was just like, oh, my God, I can't I can't draw anymore now because I just use all my brain power on researching honestly i've never had a comic book oh. do that i always just like the most research i do is like the i, I have like these desert pictures that i look mm. at and uh yeah that's it i mean i i, I one day i'd like to but yeah i've yeah. never researched anything well josh Me either. Mm -hmm. yeah. for You're gordon's too lazy Gordon three, Josh, you were saying that it wasn't research, but you just know so much about World War Two that that just went into it, the World War Two comic you did. Well, that's just an interest, anyway. I'm just like I always just watch World War Two stuff and read World War Two stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one yeah. where Ali Talman falls in love with the uh, with the head from World War Two. Yeah, yeah. It's not very historically I mean, accurate. My my battery might die soon, so if, uh -oh. I, if I end up cutting out, that's why, but sorry. I love that. I'm like, uh, should delete some uh, photos. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect the live stream to take up so much energy from my phone. Yeah, it was it, fully it, charged. It, it, it really does. Instagram, like, I think that's one of the reasons I want us to go to YouTube because it just, like, it, it's crazy how fast the thing just goes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I keep mine plugged in the whole time, generally. Oh, but another thing I wanted to talk about, too, this book by um, Matthew Thurber. I bought this probably six months ago or something, and I've just had, had it floating around like intending to read it like just leaving a book out where you can see it so that you know that you intend to read it so it's been like floating around my room for six months and i finally read it the other day and it's amazing it's a pandemic comic which so one is it oh, oh vector it's hugo. called uh, vector hugo yeah Boom. yeah it's a, it he drew it during the pandemic and um for at least halfway through the book you can see all the dates so it looks like he was doing daily daily strips and it's hilarious. It's it's hilarious and thought provoking and beautifully drawn. Highly recommend. It's been like since the Tumblr days, just like every single day a new comic, right? Oh, for Who's him. Thurber, really? Hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess he used to do Infomaniacs on the Picture Box website. Rest in peace, Dan the Dell. Well, he's not actually dead, but his company <laughs> is. Um, yeah, Thurber has been pumping stuff out online. I guess. One eight hundred mice. I think that was all just like in zines. Art comic. I think that was just like swimmers group put that out, and then it was collected by D and Q. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, no, he's been pumping it out. Is Jack? Yeah, Jack Cohen in those Vector Hugo comics. Oh, that was Mister Colostomy, Alex. I, I know Jack uh, subscribed to his Patreon for a time, and he put her in one of the books. There was a character oh, called Jack. I I haven't read Mister Colostomy or the other one that you mentioned. I've only yeah, seen. Uh, 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 art, uh, art, art comic is brilliant. yeah art comic I, and that's this one great. and one other one i think jack and i did the math and we realized that these monthly patreon fees were like really adding up and it's like ooh, <laughs> it's like hundreds of dollars a year or something to appear in a matthew thurber comic like we should probably put the kibosh on that yeah. purse strings are a bit tight at the time mm. Oh, golly gosh. Oh, speaking of purse strings being tight, I might finally receive my Poochie Award money soon. Oh, God, finally. You haven't yeah. got No. Um, a fuck up with the uh, accountant, wasn't it? Yes, there was an accountant 
issues. Yes, we used to I have the same to... accountant. I no longer have that yeah. accountant. I hope you've moved as well. Yes, I ha I still have your same. I I moved to your new accountant. I have your yes. new accountant. He's I awesome. believe he he did forget to lodge our taxes this year, but apparently a crisis averted. It's okay, but yeah, we a week or so. Oh ago, boy. I was like, hang on, wait, he, he didn't put the, what, what the fuck? Uh, but it, I think it's okay. And apparently we're going to get a refund or something. Uh, is it dollars or euros? Uh, it's euros, which is part of the problem um, that I've been having because it's boring. But the, the port that you have to send it through was the wrong port because it's euros. So that took weeks and. I feel like this has just been really frustrating for everybody involved. What, and at um, this point, uh, what is 8,000 euros? It's probably about 600. Well, that's what I was going to say. Oh, my God. That's yes. what I was going to say, because I got like a, a, like a French uh, like a French, a French thing coming out, and they paid me. And like between them, like me signing the contract and getting paid, I lost about $100 because the euro <laughs> was like tanking. Yeah, when I first uh, won the award, I looked at, I looked it up and I was like, well, it, it was, uh, I'm not going to say how much it is because I don't want anybody to rob me. But um, but then I looked it up a year later and it went down by like a $1,000. Whoa. Yeah, that's I used to love getting my like, European royalty checks and like, oh, yes, like I can add like another quarter onto this in USD. But now it's just like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Poor bastards. Yeah. And uh, it's a bit bit rough uh, over there in the Eurozone right now. Yeah. Um, a bit rough. I, had so anyway. much, I don't think I talked to you about this, but I had so much fun hanging out with the Fulgencio people. Oh, my God. In, um, in Spain. No, Caesar was, and Bernie, cool. two of my favorite people in the yeah. world. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fuck, really you went fun. to Spain. I've not heard about your Spain trip. It was good? Yeah, it was good. I was a little bit sick, um, yeah. so I couldn't party. Um, mm. I felt like I felt like kind of a downer. I felt kind of sad because I couldn't party. But um, oh man, there was one night though that me that that everybody wanted to go party until like two a.m. and I was like, oh, I just want to go home. So me and Bernie were walking around in um, Barcelona until for for like an hour and a half looking for a cab and trying to flag down cabs and running running at them and then it would drive away. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I've, I've had that some brilliant crazy. times with, with those boys. We were in Zaragoza or something. We stayed up until the sun came up, just like doing karaoke on our phones and just drinking yeah. whatever we could. And the streets stank of piss. And I toddled off to mm. the train feeling more like death than I've ever felt in my entire life and rode yeah. the train to France and just like, oh man, I was fucked. <laughs> just listening to a little peep on the train and just like, Ugh. if I, oh. if, if this would have happened to me when I was in my mid twenties, I would have been partying up a storm. Mm. Yeah, no, those those yeah. boys like to party. They're getting on in years, yeah. as I am as well. Um, we're all going grey. We need to stop partying so hard. But yeah, it, it's tough to resist. And those boys mm -hmm. get on a tear. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking yep. hell! I miss them so much. I'd, I'd love to go hang out with Caesar and Bernie. Yeah. So many great late night chats, just the kind of people I can hang out with and just have big, deep fucking chats. Uh, yeah. yeah. Used to have that with Alvin, Bonaventura as well. So those late night kind of, kind of chats, drug fueled uh, chatty chats. Not yeah. a manga chat though, just regular boring chat, right? Uh, BD chat, uh, YA chat, floppy chat. Yeah, different, different chat. But not a manga chat. No. <clears throat> Not a professional manga chat. Nate's disappeared, I saw. He must have had to go and fuck a horse or something. As his yeah, horse. yeah. <laughs> He's the one. So your Google Pixel has been fantastic today, Josh. And Nate's phone is really yeah, stinking well, I it can't up. Believe it. it was literally just those photos. It's like I just had too many photos of nothing. Yeah, i, I got to clean out my phone, get rid of all the, 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 the chaff in there. Yeah. Oh, well, a bit of a lull in the conversation. How about it's time for Simon Hanselman's DVD Corner? Take a load off there, guys. It's DVD Corner. I watched this yesterday and today. It's uh, the Licorice Pizza from the the, the PTN. Oh, scene. yeah. I'd not seen I it. I didn't realise. But, yeah, me too. It was uh, Cooper Hoffman, the boy in it. That's uh, 
what's his name? Philip Seymour Hoffman's son. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, he was amazing. He's, yeah, he's 19 he's in this, plays a 15-year-old. A bit, a bit pedo-ish. The, the main lady in it, she's 25, mm -hmm. and the boy is 15 in it. It's kind yeah. of a pedo movie. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there was, was a little bit of an uproar about that. Yeah, it was interesting. I was reading about it after I finished it, but it was a bit freewheeling, you know, it kind of ended. And so a lot of movies I watch these days, they just sort of end. And it's just like, oh, all right. I, I feel a bit unsatisfied, yeah. but I did enjoy mm -hmm. it overall. It reminded me, you were talking about the seventies before in the research. This was a, you know, seventies period piece, gas crisis yeah. of 73, which echoed the current gas crisis we're in, but it was good. I enjoyed it. I think I picked this up for about $9 on Blu-ray. Uh, you know, pretty cheap, cheaper than going to the theater. So, you know, I prefer to buy my movies. Now I can have this forever. I can watch this again in six years if I care to, if I live that long. But yeah, not, not, not too shabby, Licorice Pizza. I didn't realise, uh, Josh and I were talking about it, and he was like, oh, it's about the record stores, like blah, 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 where Matt Groening used to work. And I was like, what? No, it's about like a waterbed sales. And like, but yeah, Licorice Pizza, mm. I realised it's a slang for a, a vinyl record, a Licorice Pizza. Oh, okay. I never... I never yeah, knew I didn't realize what that meant. I just figured it out. Like Josh was talking about record stores, I was like, "Look, oh, like a licorice pizza." Like, so wait, the record store's not even in the movie. No, there's nothing. It did. Paul Thomas Anderson just thought that those words and evoked to him that era of like being a kid and like licorice pizza. He just found it an evocative turn of phrase. I, I, oh, call, I call musical leads like all this stuff. I got my music gear here. I call this black spaghetti. You know, the, all, all the chords, all the leads get tangled up like black spaghetti. So yeah, licorice pizza. It's you know, it's a similar kind of vibe there, wordplay. But yeah, it was pretty good. I've not watched this yet. This is called uh, Strawberry Mansion. Um, don't know much about this. Um, it's a film by Albert Bimmy and Kentucky Audley, but it's about the future and like dreams being recorded, and a, and a man falls in love with his younger version of a woman in her dreams. There's lots of puppets mm. and claymation in it, but it looks interesting. It looks like a quirky, interesting indie film. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I, I've been seeing it around and I'm just intrigued by it. And so I, I took the plunge on the DVD, which I think was on sale for $10, around the $10 market. It comes with trading cards inside. You open it up and there's all these little perforated trading cards, which I find quite, quite sweet and cute. Um, I'm excited to watch it. I'll probably report on this next week. It's on my to-watch pile. I, I just watched this. I watched uh, Tangerine by Sean Baker. Mm. It's a, it was shot with three iPhones on the streets of LA. It's about two trans prostitutes. And uh, just they just found these girls at the LGBT center in downtown. And just wanted <laughs> to talk to them and do a bit of research and then just got them in the film. And it, it was great. I was almost crying at the end. Beautiful film. I've about heard friendship. about that. It's really good. Tangerine. Yeah. Uh, the, the two girls in it, the main girls, were absolutely incredible. Oh, I saw half of that. It's, yeah, it was very good. Very confronting and pretty hardcore, but beautiful as well. The, the, the way it was I mean, shot on fucking iPhones, but with this special program, that really nice uh, textures and, and colors. Uh, it really popped off the screen. It's a Blu-ray. I watched this on my PS5. I, I exclusively use my PS5 to watch blu-ray movies i don't actually play any games but yeah check out tangerine that was good and i also watched the next feature from that director uh, red rocket it's my friend al uh, stop motion animator al matchin he recommended this to me and he said that the, the, the front does not represent the movie at all it's a it's a nude man in the middle of a donut so i was imagining something like porkies or something you know like you know, I said to Al, I'm going to be really disappointed if this is not like a Benny Hill-esque comedy about a man running around in a big donut. And it wasn't. He was a, he's an ex-porn man and he moves back to his hometown. And it, it's just in another squalid kind of, it's set in Texas, squalid slice of life kind of indie movie. But it was very good. Uh, again, the colours are popping and a pedo -y again. It's like a, a 45 year old man trying to seduce a 17 year old to do porn with him to get his career back on track. Very creepy, uh, horrible mm. characters, but I love stuff about horrible characters. I, I don't need to like or respect the characters in a movie. I just want to be, yeah. you know, I want to be the little fly on the wall, just watching what's going on. And yeah, there's a bit of direction at the end of this. that just like, I was thinking about it for days, just like close ups on like a character's mouth and eyes as they say something, they just drop this verbal bomb that just destroys someone and the direction mm. of it was wow it was 
again an ambiguous ending one of those endings where it's like well you can just imagine what happened and it's like oh come uh. on just write it for me but but then i did the last few days i can't stop thinking about it and like what could happen and trying to interpret the ending and so there, there's value in that i think in an open-ended ending and it, often a cop-out but in this case yeah i came to respect it and i, I think I, I made a decision of what happened and what the final scene meant and I'm happy. And, and I was thinking about it for days. So, you know, successful cinema, successful art, perhaps. Uh, and my final one here, I haven't watched this yet either. Probably watch this tomorrow. It's uh, Men by Alex Garland, who wrote like 28, uh, 28 Days Later in the Beach and uh, stuff like that. Mm. I, I've heard this is shit. Uh, this is a horror movie. I think it's a woman who like moves to a small town after something horrible happens to her and all the men are played by the same man. I think I'm actually spoiled yeah. on the ending and something that happens, but I won't go into it. I don't want to spoil anyone else, but I like Alex Garland. I, I even enjoyed uh, Dread, the uh, the Judge Dread movie. That he actually wrote it, apparently. You know, he's done 28 Days Later and a bunch of Danny Boyle stuff. Uh, I think Shallow Grave as well. I like That's a good Danny Boyle movie. He did, I haven't seen Ex Machina. I saw Annihilation with Natalie Portman. Ex Machina is really good. It is, yeah. So I bought the Blu-ray out for five mm -hmm. bucks the other day. I'm going to watch that next week. And Annihilation, I watched on a plane, high on a pill. Uh, it was all right. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll mm -hmm. check that out. But, yeah, I'll probably report on this next week, what men is like. But I've, I've heard it's a bit shit. But that could have just been some cunts talking. And I'll be like, ooh, that was actually quite good. Good job, Alex Garland. But we'll see. We will see. 28 days. Well, 28 days later was one of the first movies I watched when I first started getting stoned. Oh. And I was in a trailer park in somebody's trailer buying weed from them, and we got high with him. And then he put on 28 days later, and I thought there were zombies. And he was Oof. a scary guy too. So Oof. it was That's very horrible. scary, immersive. Yeah, it's just it's a scary movie. I think I watched mm -hmm. the the sequel to 28 Days Later with Robert. What's his name? Robert Carlyle. And I think I had to turn it off. I think I was a bit high. I was like 22 yeah. and I was living in some weird share house. And it, yeah, it made me uncomfortable and upset me. But I do love those movies. So Speaking of zombies, I watched uh, The Mist yesterday. You ever see that? It's a uh, Frank Darabont movie. Yes. It has almost the whole of like the Walking Dead Series 1 cast is in it. <laughs> It's really good. And then I watched Tales of Walking Dead. I watched like the first four episodes of that. We only, I watched the first episode of Tales of the Walking Dead. Um, the first one, the Terry Crews one is the best one. Um, mm. They have one that's like a Samantha Morton, who's like the bold woman, the, the yes, whisperer. Mm. Yeah. That was like, a, I felt like that wasn't that great. Um, there's like a Groundhog Day one that was absolute shit. And then uh, the one I'm comments. halfway through seems, seems <laughs> fun. There's people in the comments just doing like up yours fingers and vomit emojis and saying, oh, fuck the mist and all sorts of stuff. I like the mist. They were trapped in the the supermarket. and there's all the Yeah, yeah. It was there. good. I liked that. Uh, it was a Stephen King short story, perhaps, was based on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was. And I also watched Bird Box. So it's all been like end of the world stuff for me. I don't know what I'm saying. You want a triangle of sadness? What the fuck does that mean? Please review Eat the Rich. Anyway. Oh, Wiener Dog. That's a great Todd Salons movie. I, I have all oh, yeah. Todd's, I have every Todd Salons movie, except for the Fear and Loathing one that you can only get on VHS. But I've got everything. Wiener Dog's good. I thought that was a bit of a return to form. We were we were watching Todd Salons movies for a while, a couple months ago. Yeah, you know, Happiness is I great. Welcome movies. to Dollhouse. I love storytelling. I'm desperate to see... The story. Have you seen storytelling? Yes, I just story watched it recently. The, the fiction and non-fiction sections. He filmed a third thing called autobiography that had James Vanderbeek as a closeted high school football player. And I'm just, mm. I just, I wish there'd be a Blu-ray Blu re-release and actually put on like this third chapter. I don't know why he cut it. I, I don't know why he removed it from the movie. Um, right. But yeah, I, I'd kill to see this third section. I don't know. But yeah, storytelling's brilliant. That that first chapter with the uh... anyway. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in Dark Horse, have you seen Dark Horse? The sort of one with the toy so. collecting fat guy, and then he gets together with this depressed woman, and Christopher Walken's in it. It's, it's I, the... I don't think I've seen that one. I'm writing it's it down the... though. Yeah, it's the second to last uh, Salon's feature, and it's pretty good. 
Well, I, I was going to say a bit of a spoiler, but I won't now. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm it ca watch. carries over characters from previous films, like the way Dawn Wiener is in you know three different films. There's like different you know, different actors yeah. actors portraying her, but it is the same actor. But anyway, uh, just pay attention cool. to the cast listing at the end. Um, yes. I, I, yeah, I think Salons has a new movie coming. It was before the pandemic, it was apparently shot, and now I think it's getting released, but. It's supposed to have Penelope Cruz in it and stuff, but I think it's been recast. Uh, yeah, sort of an Oedipus kind of thing, like a young boy is in love with his mother or something, but it's supposed to be Salon's oh. most mainstream feature to date. Oh, okay. I desperately wanted to see Salon's stage play, Emma and Max. It was, I went to Cab, the Comic Arts Brooklyn, I think 2019, and I missed it by like two days. I could have gone to see the Salon's stage play. Um, oh, it just did like a two week, two week run. I was hoping they'd film it from different angles and put together like a DVD release or something of it, but nothing ever came to, to pass. Uh, wow, that's it. Yeah, it sounded was, like an amazing That was the only play. chance. Yeah, no, you just had to be there and see it. And I really, I should yeah. have stayed in town a bit longer just so I could have been one of the people to see it. But, uh, yeah. Shit. Yeah, I love Todd Salon. one of my biggest influences. Tried to get him to provide a quote for Mega Hex back in the day, but he didn't want to. Don't blame him. Mm. Oh man, I've got a lot of people in my in my messages asking for quotes recently. Oh really? Yeah. yeah, yeah ask, be, be asking for help. The, uh, I know. I only I know. quotes for books I just like genuinely and like gaga about. I don't want to be like mm -hmm. a tart about quotes and just be throwing out quotes everywhere. Yep. I think Dan Klaus told me once he like he used to get asked all the time and he's like all right and he just the code was like he was like the wackiest wacko in comics so like all of his friends would see like if dan was like you know the wackiest wacko they're like okay yeah. a real quote or something like that i could sound like something uh. like that handing out kind of like <clears throat> very dry quotes that are obviously kind of like at gunpoint uh-huh you feel like you would lose your fans trust if you like said yes to everything like that yeah indeed i get mm -hmm. lots of my you know i have like 13 publishers around the world so they're always trying to get me to sell books for them and, you know I just, you know just, yeah people you know yeah they want a quote you know it's uh but you know i mean i'm doing bloody dan Clow's quotes now you know i'm doing quotes on the back of the fucking complete eight ball out november 1st so you know let hopefully you help him sell some you know. units well, and, you know, me and Ed Pisco, we're going to sell these for Dan. That's, you know, <laughs> uh. Yeah, no, i, I got to be careful with the quotes. I mean, well, I've done Cowdery recently. Alex Graham, very happily, did Dog Biscuits. Uh, did a Sammy Alwani book. Uh, very happy to do that. You know, I'd do a, a, a Nate uh, Garcia quote. I'd do a Josh Pettinger quote. If the, if the opportunity presents itself, you can always ask Josh. I'm not going to. Josh Pettinger is the wackiest wacko in comics. <laughs> uh. Uh, yeah. This is a book that is out. It's a book that exists <laughs> and you can hold in your hands. <laughs> it was printed on paper. Hey, have you watched that um, Worst Person in the World movie yet? No, I've got it. I've got the DVD okay. up there, yeah. No, it, it's uh, Norwegian with English subtitles, so it's something I, I can't. You okay. know, I, I watch this shit. While you can't I'm just draw and, draw and watch it. Yeah. No, no. There were subtitled mm. sequences in like Midsummer or something last week, and I was like, oh, fucking hell. I think Tangerine as well is a bunch of like uh, Armenian characters, so I had to like, oh, fucking hell, like stop working. Like, all right, what are they saying? <laughs> fucking hell. Yeah. Oh god, that, yeah. Tangerine was great. I, I really enjoyed that movie. It's, it, I, I'd not heard of this Sean Baker. Uh, he started out doing like that. Uh, Greg the Bunny show, remember that shitty old, like Sarah Silverman, Eugene Levy, and the kid from like fucking like Scott Evil or whatever his name is, the werewolf from mm. Buffy. The what's he? What's that redheaded boy from the the robot chicken? What's his name? Seth Green. Oh yeah, yeah. That show, like Seth. Uh, sorry, uh, Greg the Bunny. It wasn't very good, uh, but I, I think maybe the, there were shorts that came first that were better, and then it got sanitized for TV. And what I saw on TV mm. was shittier, but. Yeah, interesting that someone would come from Greg the Bunny to making like, you know, Tangerine and, and Red Rocket and these rather squalid, serious, uh, you know, A24 kind of films. I'm glad you brought up Tangerine because I've been meaning to watch that for a while, but I forgot about it. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. 
like it was Salonzi and like it was up up there for me. I was like, oh, I enjoyed that as much as you know, Welcome to the Dollhouse. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. That's 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 strong. That's that's I you know I love Welcome to the Dollhouse. I I don't know if it yeah, but it was really I really enjoyed it. I, I really did enjoy it. It was it was great. Cool. I, I'd recommend it. Yeah, the, you know, very depressing. I, I'm still thinking about like that that white. Uh, uh, prostitute girl in it like is, is where it ends it's just I don't know just you know my mother's like a drug addict and stuff I just had a lot of experience with people like that so it's just yeah. I don't know it just hit me it's just like fuck these poor broken fucking people and like Jesus fucking Christ mm-hmm. like where, where do you go from that yeah, dark dark stuff but humorous as well and as I said earlier the, the, the ending was very uplifting and it's like you know friendship in, in, in the, the face of unimaginable horror and squalor and hatred just a beautiful moment of friendship and sweetness yeah, that sounds just awesome a, just a, a ripe apple amidst a field of shit for a for a hungry horse yeah i don't know speaking of hungry horses i don't know where uh, where nate is he's, he's just not come back he messaged and said his phone keeps crashing so uh well uh, next now week it's him it's yeah. him this yeah. time He's our new phone whipping boy. Fuck you, Nathan. Yeah. No, he's out of the gang. Alex, do you want to be our full timer? <laughs> uh, maybe uh, a half timer. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, half, half a month. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or you could just do it from bed and just spew suicidal ideation and just tell us <laughs> to go fuck ourselves and how much you hate us. That could be interesting. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. That would be awesome. Everybody would love that. Patrick weeping in the background. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Uh, is, Pat, is Patrick there? Is he well? He's cleaning the kitchen right now and listening to the live stream while he cleans. Hello, Patrick. Before the I cleaned my whole studio today, and it just makes me so fucking excited to draw. I cleaned mine too. Nice. It feels so. It just feels like the excitement level to like start new things and. Yeah, spring cleaning. Yeah. Or, autumnal cleaning. Yeah, it works both ways. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wish I was coming to Short Run to hang out with you and Patrick, Alex. I'd love to hang out. I miss our yeah. uh, I miss our boozy nights. We eat a bit of pizza and Yeah, have the a timing drink. of the pandemic was so so bad for that because we just started hanging out and then everything came crashing down and then Yeah. Me and Patrick were going to the jam space and playing music, and then you and me and Patrick would hang out and have a chin wag, and we went and saw Tim and Eric live, and yeah, it was lovely. That was fun. But, you know, fucking pandemic put the kibosh on having friends. Yeah, uh, it really. Did. Yeah. Stupid yep. fucking pandemic. Damn. But, but it was good for my art career. Yeah, no, it really me too. I mean, and Josh, I think you three. Uh, it just, it was, yeah. I, I the pandemic was amazing. Yes, it, yeah. Patrick's saying there, it killed our band, but uh, yeah. But no, it, it was the making of Alex's career and Josh's career and my career. It really, uh, top five mass death events. Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I wonder if I wonder if there were people in like the the Spanish flu back in the thirties, whenever it was, who were like, "Fuck yeah!" Like you know, afterwards they were like, "Yes, that was that was great for me." Like coffin salesman, like yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's amazing. But, yeah, but then the... yeah, I wonder. I mean, somebody like you know, you see that all the old paintings of like the plague masks and stuff. Somebody must have been like not doing that great, and then they started drawing the plague masks, and then you know, yeah, yeah. And it just made their career, and they were sitting in prison. Yeah, yeah. The Holocaust happened, and everything got horrible again. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, yeah, I, wish yeah. could, I wish things could straighten out uh, in our current age, but yeah, we won't go into it. But God, it's horrible. Yeah, I've been on like a bit of a news avoidance kick recently. I'll often be on Twitter scrolling about, seeing what's going on. But I've just been watching movies this week and painting, and just trying to ignore it all. I don't know, put my head in the sand, fuck it. That's probably good. Yeah, so I don't bore my wife at the dinner table. It's like, oh, did you hear this horrible thing? And did you see this horrible shit? And just ranting. 
Oh, yeah, I watched oh, way too much of this that trial, that D- Daryl Brooks trial this week, and it's just like well, shouldn't have watched re- all that. He's representing himself. It's pretty funny. Um, I've caught like two things: the box fort and just some weird blather. Um, interesting chap. Uh, interesting yeah, it was chap. that. <clears throat> he did. The, he went the sovereign citizen route. So it's like basically. So his defense is basically like. Yeah, I probably did. I'm not going to say I did it, but I shouldn't be punished. Oh my! Yeah, no. I, I believe in you know fair trials and whatever, but like, uh, yeah, yeah. On video, I mean, <laughs> lock the cunt up. <laughs> We're all dropping like flies, and now my phone is like uh, four fifteen. I have till four fifteen. My phone dies. We're about to hit the uh, the, the two hour mark. I think we should piss off. We've lost Nate. We've lost Alex to their hot yeah, yeah. Uh yeah. Well, what's today? It's Wednesday. Um, are you coming out on Friday? You want to go to the dive? Park? Yeah, I'll be there Friday. Yeah. Do a bit of work. Do a bit of pool. Have a nice time. Uh, that'd be lovely. It's nice to yeah, hang out yeah. with people in person and get out and have a have a ride and play some pool and just you know, this is all well and good. This manga chat on a phone business, sitting in a dark room. But I I, I do like to hang out with people in flesh world. It's nice. Yeah. Same. I just uh. Brianna says I'm I'm getting a bit weird, so. Well, you're sitting around watching the Daryl Brooks trial. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fuck anyone up. That kind of horror. That level of, yeah, fucking internet. Get out and have a ride. I went for a lovely ride earlier. I'm out every day, but yeah, it's just, it's just lovely. Chugging water and just staring at the mountains off in the distance and the, the uh, mist rolling down the hill. It's beautiful. Let me see if my tires. Oh yeah, nice and firm. Good, 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 good. Ready for Friday. Um, yeah, no, we definitely get up to up to drifters and uh, play some pool uh, for sure. I, I gave away all my dollars, so if you got any dollar bills, bring them out because we need change from the change machine. Yeah, actually, I have. Um, I found uh, when I was cleaning today, I found a big pile of quarters for laundry. But we have an app for the laundry now, so I can just bring all those quarters for pool. Oh, I cleaned out the car the other day and I found five quarters. So I'll bring those actually. And uh, then we awesome. won't, have to, won't have to get that nice bartender to, to give us money from an extra tip. That awkward thing. A tip me extra. I'll give you like, oh, come on. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in to Manga Chat. Uh, make sure to go get your, your Josh Pettinger child size power wash t shirts from this child's <laughs> t shirt business. And yeah, yeah. He took at my Instagram, all our plugs. We got all our plugs on our Instagram, so you have a dig about, have a bit of a snuffle about, like a truffle pig, and go and buy some shit. We all have link trees. Yeah, I have a climb in the trees. Have a bit of a climb. Don't fall out. Be careful. All right. Well, buddy, I'll see you on Friday, IRL, and the rest all of right. those cunts. We'll see you next week.